Oshino from Lagos. I will therefore pray their indulgence to observe the minister in his honor. And I will also, as a Muslim, as we were here, we are here for the stakeholders meeting on the build to establish the Nigerian Army University Bill 2020 that I sponsored for the establishment of the Nigerian Army University. It is the normal process of procedure in enacting the bill for it to be referred to committee and the committee is expected to hold a public hearing to have input from the outside that will shape, amend or introduce new things that are missing from the original bill. I'm sure by now most of you have the available copies of the proposed bill. As you are also aware, the university, the Nigeria Army University was established by the approval of the Federal Executive Council, I think sometime in 19, uh, 20, 2018 or 2019 thereafter. And as the law or the Constitution requires, an institution like that must be backed by law or act of National Assembly. And uh, this is not the first time um, an institution is established before the formalities. And this is more of formalities that we are supposed to do. Because of the time constraint and also the pandemic that has locked down the whole world. And uh, up to now, we are still living in fear. You can see all of us wearing masks, um, trying to prevent ourselves from the unseen and the unknown, which is ravaging the country and the number keeps going on. So, because of two reasons. One is the pandemic itself, and two, for the fact that uh, this is more a formality, and also three, because as I said, politics is all about interest, and this is my interest. So, I will grant the indulgence of the invited guests or those out there uh, to fully support this bill that I sponsor and is sponsored and is the university that will have we cherish that will have in southern Borno for the first time. Borno has as of now two universities, one state and the other federal. We have Polytechnic, we have College of Education, we have all sorts of schools, higher institutions in Borno State. But all of that is centered in Borno Central. The North doesn't have any high institution. In fact, we are better than them because we have one college of education in Wakabi. So I don't think it will be out of place for me to start by craving an indulgence to support this bill, just as my colleagues in the Senate when it went for the second reading unanimously supported the bill. Apart from that, we all know that we need specialty institutions to cater for special needs, especially in Nigeria and in its context. We need Nigerian University. And I want to commend all those that contributed in making sure that that institution is established. I want to also inform our invited guests that the university is fully operational with accredited programs and matriculated students for the first and the second year now. Also, the university, as I said, is uh, fully established in terms of structure, accommodation, and facilities for learning. We are ready to go. The only thing that is on our way now is the law that is required.
Uh, I want to also use this opportunity to appeal to the Nigerian University Commission that has been gracious in, co in cooperating with the National Assembly, the Nigerian Army, uh, for the establishment of this university. There are courses that need to be accredited. I hope that that will be done as soon as possible. I will also grant the judges an appeal to other interesting institutions or civil society because they are represented and other non-governmental agencies to support this university in whatever way so that it will come up to the level that we so desire. Having said that, as I said, we are doing this more or less a formality and we will appreciate as we process the bill of any input, correction, ideas that can make it much, much uh, better. Finally, I want to thank everybody because I will not have the chance to come over here again and make contribution except that I will be presiding over this. I want to close my remarks by specifically, you know, mentioning my brother, the Kowats, for the effort that we made in order to have this university cited in our zone. I know the processes or how far you have gone or what you did the blackmail, the opposition, and everything. Despite that, you'll be able to stand up and uh, we have the support that we needed. Because as I said, ladies and gentlemen, actually Borno South, if you know Borno South, we need not only Nigeria Army University, but I think we need Armed Forces University. But well, since you have Nigeria Army only, we thank God. And I want to commend you and for standing up to it and helping us to realize this dream. Your name will ever remain to be remembered by not only us in Southern Borno, but the country as a whole, because this is the first time we're going to have. Nigerian Army University. We thank you very much for that effort and we pray that Almighty Allah will reward you for doing what to remain as indelible in our minds. And I also want to use the opportunity to thank the Honorable Minister, even though he's not around, Adamu Adamu, Adamu. I call him Ya Adamu because his junior brother is a very good friend of mine. We grew up together and we schooled together for the support he gave us in the establishment of uh, this university. I want to close by acknowledging or asking one of the elders of the Senate that just walked in with all due respect to call him because he has been here for a long time. He's supposed to retire, but he refused. He's here now for 20 something years. Service manager, with all due respect. Uh, uh, I will uh, allow the new entrance, our colleagues, and the one and only we call her.
that distinguish members of the Senate Committee of the Nigerian Army, the Honorable Minister of Defense, they are heavily represented, the Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, they are also heavily represented, the Vice Chancellor of the Nigerian Army University, and other members of the Nigerian Army University View Governing Council, they are present. <coughs> members of the Civil Society of Indian Nations, they are present. Members of the press, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me, on behalf of my humble self and Nigerian Army, commiserate with uh, this distinguished Senate on the person of this Senator Oshino. May the gentle service and perfect peace. Today, March yet another great day in the development of the Nigerian Army University view. Let me start by appreciating the contributions of the Senate for passing the bill through the first and second readings, especially the Chairman Senate Committee on the Nigerian Army, distinguished Senator Ali Blumen, who sponsored the bill and heavily supported by his distinguished uh, members. Equally, I appreciate the Honorable Minister of Education, the Honorable Minister of Defense, the National Universities Commission, and all other friends and world wishes of the Nigerian Army University view for whom the university story reflects their legacy and passion for education in Nigeria. Distinguished gentlemen, the Nigerian Army University view was conceived as one of the intellectual arms of the Nigerian Army in order to bring cutting edge knowledge and address the increasing need for specialized training and research for the armed forces and the wider society. The Nigerian Army University view is part of the Nigerian Army's counter to the violent anti-education ideology of the terrorists ravaging the Northeast region. The university is carefully and strategically cited in view to showcase the successes recorded by the armed forces in the counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations. The university will reduce illiteracy, productively, productively engage young persons, thereby reducing the pool of youth susceptible to radicalization and recruitment by the insurgent group. Thus, the institution becomes the major front in the Nigerian Army's hearts and minds war in the Northeast, with wider implications for the rest of Nigeria and other crisis ridden parts of the Sahel. Furthermore, it is positioned as a model for the civil military cooperation relationship with its multi layer and top bottom interface between military and civilian establishments, ending at the bottom with a town and gun relation in view. Distinguished senators, other invited stakeholders, the Nigerian Army University View Bill is a very important document that will imbue the university with the statutory legal backing to operate as a federal government citadel of learning. The powers of all organs of the institution will be derived from this document. Next is the very cornerstone upon which all her vision, mission, and aspirations will be erected. This is 
why this is why this public hearing is necessary as a necessary legislative step that will lead to its passage is very very important. The public and the press will first look into the uniqueness embedded in the design and operation of the Nigerian Army University View and the role in the vision for leading to its conceptualization. It is very hard to talk about this epochal moment without really appreciating the tireless efforts of these distinguished senators. The dedication and interest to this exercise imposes your law for educational development. It is particularly interesting that you share this law with the President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammadu Buhari, who graciously granted the approval for the embassy on the 11th of April 2018 and followed through with a groundbreaking ceremony on the 30th of October 2018 at the Pamplin site. This unprecedented executive shop legislative relationship is the driving force of the Nigerian Army University and we can but appreciate it always. Let me reiterate at this point that the university is already living up to its bidding of becoming a true citadel of life where every Nigerian has an equal opportunity of gaining admission and pursuing any course of their choice as long as they meet the entry criteria. Statistics from our recent admission exercises testify this omission, and I want to pledge that this and many practices targeted at national population will continue to subsist. Distinguished Senators of the Ninth Assembly, invited guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you most sincerely for coming and as you contribute to this debate, I wish you a very fruitful deliberation. Thank you and God bless.
Now, because I was one area that this should be a very short speech, I will follow all the other protocols while I go straight into what the Honorable Minister would want me to say in this bill, concerning this bill. Well, the background to this bill started as early as um, April 2018, when the Federal Executive Council gave a directive to the Minister to make sure that he presents a memo to Council with a draft bill to establish this National Army University. That was done. All protocols, all procedures were observed and an early bill was presented. But it had to be taken back into the kitchen again, into the kitchen again, to make sure what comes out meets global standards and achieves the purpose for which it was made. And for this purpose, we collaborated very closely with the security forces, not just the Nigerian Army, but mostly with the Nigerian Army and other security forces. And what we have today is a near good bill, good to go. Why well, I'm saying near good is because for lawyers, no law is ever perfect. As it is now, as policymakers, the Federal Ministry of Education supports this bill fully. For two reasons. Very many reasons for two stand out. Number one is granting us more access. Access to get youths, to get the not so young, to get the not too old to learn, to have access to tertiary education, which we most need, and which, if you look at the statistics, the universities in Nigeria are not nearly enough to cater for our population. Secondly, we want to classify this university as a special need university because of the times we are in. The fact that it's background deals to the army means that if we have our say and our way that issues of security, issues of um, taking responsibility for our own security, our own safety and our own knowing that our country must be and it must be it should be a general cause. So that by the time the university increases in 100 level, in the minds of every student, they need to take security seriously, to be, to love the country, if I may say that, then we would have moved this country from a position of I am myself to I am ourselves. And that is why the ministry is very happy that the university is taking off and is going to work closely with the university councils to ensure that courses are tailored in such a way that this kind of security to the situations that we have currently, unfortunately this university is in the theater of this war, that it is properly taken care of in the future. Now, I have had opportunity of just taking a brief skim through the bill. And now I'm talking as a lawyer who is a draftsman, I can say that the objectives are this of the bill, the purposes are properly stated. But the only thing we will need to look at again is the drafting. We will probably I will suggest we suggest that we look at the drafts again. Some sections are put in places they should not be, so it does not give fluency of reading and an apt meaning to what we want. An example is if you look at section 12, um, I understand what section 12 is saying, but a third party reader will not be able to make me. So, because I had a very short time to look at the draft bill, I'm craving the indulgence of the Senate. So allow me, I 
at the end of it, to send in some suggestions on how to reject the draft in order to give it the meaning which I know the army intends to give and also to bring it in line with other universities when it comes to regulation and administration just to avoid future ambiguities which can lead to um, litigations or unpleasant consequences. I want to express the appreciation of the Honorable Minister and the whole ministry, including the Permanent Secretary, on the opportunity for us to align ourselves to this bill and to make our presentation. And once again, I request and I say that we will send in our written detailed comments on the draft. It has nothing to do with the substance. Thank you. I am the Director of Public Affairs of the National Universities Commission here to represent uh, the Commission. Uh, I'm sure the Chairman of the two and Mr. Abdul, the Executive Secretary and the Minister are actually out of the country. They are, they are together in, in Germany and they will be coming back on Sunday. So I bring uh, presentations from him and from the National Universities Commission. And we, um, in the National Universities Commission, whenever we are invited to a stakeholders meeting, uh, for us it is different from a public hearing because what we understand by a stakeholders meeting is a meeting where we would have minds on a document and then probably at the end of the day have a perfect or near perfect uh, document. First, let me state that um, as the Chief of Army Staff said and the Chairman, the National Universities Commission considers this university positively novel, unlike the novel coronavirus. This is, this is a positive novel. And we are more excited than anybody in, in this country to see to the success of this university. Because to us, it's the university where we are experimenting at the coming together of the military and the civilians. When you have a university that will um, take in the best from the military and the best from the bloody civilians to produce the best for the country. That's what, not only a novel, but an experiment which you hope uh, in the near future will prove to be a success. We have been, uh, I'm sure the Chief of Army Staff and the Chairman will know that we have we've been um, supporting of this university from day one and we are extremely excited that it should succeed. Uh, the Chairman mentioned that um, we should give some approvals or accreditation to some programs in the university. You see, there's a difference between accreditation and approval. What we call approval is when you want to start a program, you will apply to us to start a program. Uh, before now, we have been stopping universities from starting programs that we do not have the benchmark minimum academic standard. But now we have liberalized if any of us want to start a new program that we do not have the curriculum, we have ask the university to produce the curriculum and give it to us, and then we will subject it to our processes, which includes the, um, we will sequester professors in the field from all over the world to look at the document, and once it is uh, certified good, then we will call it up and then give them the approval to start the program, and then any other university willing. Because when a curriculum is produced, it becomes our own document, not the document of the university that produces it. So I'm advising the Nigerian uh, Army University to, you can start the program, sir. So what we need to do is to uh, talk to us. If we don't have the curriculum for that, you will uh, pay and then produce the curriculum and give it to us. And then we will evaluate it and make sure that it meets our standards. And then you are good to go. So I have the Executive Secretary's permission to let you know that you can start any program you want as long as you produce the curriculum rightly. And um, <laughs> accreditation we do when a program is mature. A program matures after three years. You can start a program but after three years it's mature for us to come for accreditation. And when we do the accreditation, I'm sure you all know, we give three statuses. We either have full accreditation, interim, uh, interim or denied. So the, 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 
before you graduate your first set work, come and look at what you are teaching, what you are giving them. If we find it sufficient, then we will give you approval to graduate them. Otherwise, we would um, either delay the graduation or we'll distribute them to where we feel they will be given the necessary uh, education they require to uh, graduate. Um, I may have noted because Mr. Pascal Erwaka, our director legal, is um, somebody who has all the laws of all the universities that he has them at his fingertips. So what he has done is to look at this draft law and he has, I will not read them all, but I will just let you know that he has given me 31 items that he feels uh, should be amended or should be incorporated for this law to meet the standards of a law of a university. You see, the military may see it as a military establishment, but we are seeing it as a university. We, we have some specialized universities already. We have the NDA, we have the Police Academy, we have the AFIT, that's the Air Force Institute of Technology in Kaduna, and we have a few other specialized universities. As far as we are concerned, the National Universities Commission, we look at the institution as a university. All the other things you do in the military that we feel is a problem. What we are concerned with is that it should be a university whose degree will be comparable to any in the world, whose uh, uh, graduates can, can move seamlessly anywhere, either internally or internationally, to pursue their postgraduates and other things. But you see, the chart we have for this university, because I remember that the chief of, Asia, chief of Army staff has been to the commission several of this university. His passion, as the chairman said, is a record. But um, what we have been discussing with him, because I have been privy to all the meetings we have had with him in the National Universities Commission, is for them to start programs that will have the Nigerian Army innovating. We need to see innovations in the, in, in, in the Nigerian Army. We need to see innovations in the country. And as I said, we are ready to let you go. So please do that. Don't, if you concentrate on programs that are available in all other universities, they are, they are not likely to get anywhere. Because if you are doing programs that are available from uh, where I can you have to go and come by Stressler and Yola, that is really good. Uh, and we are not likely to make impact. And we are so happy that when you wanted to do the vice chancellor, you chose somebody who is not only a friend to the National Universities Commission, not only a comrade, but somebody very serious. We see him in NEC as somebody who, one of the few vice chancellors in this country who will move seamlessly between the between ASU, Ministry of Education, and NEC. A friend to all the things. How do you that? So, Mr. Chairman, yeah, you know, I'm signal that we shouldn't uh, take a long time. But I'll just read one or two so that you get an idea of what we have here. Um, he said, number one, the drafters should provide a table of contents to give a holistic presentation of the structure of the bill. The document should be paginated. And he went on the lead S1, section 3, subsection A and E, for being superfluous and objectives of the university in S3 already uh, captured issues stated here. So he went on up to 30, up to 31. So we, we did not present this because we thought we were going to be discussing them item by item. But I mean, it appears that's not going to happen. So what we will do is, um, um, first of all, how many copies do you have here? I think you will surrender your own, I will surrender mine, and then we will send other than, okay, you have 20? Okay, please, can you give it to the chairman? I'm going to implore ourselves to look at this critically and then as much as possible try to incorporate everything I've said. But this is taken from what is existing in all the universities. If the university has uh, some aspects of its law that are not compatible, uh, I'm, I'm sure you also read the autonomy bill very well, incorporate it. Because I know the, you, you've been having a problem where you clash with what the Ministry of Service will want and what the typical university should have. So we advise that you should have a law that will have what the typical university should have. Because for you to attract uh, uh, lecturers around, for you to attract the best brains around, you must be seen to be in conformity with what obtains in the sector. So Mr. Chairman, I once again brings the um, goodwill of the National Investors Commission and the Executive Secretary, who I understand there for, who would have loved, if he had been here himself, he would have uh, spoken
broken here for an hour because you know, she's passionate for this industry. So I, I will give this document, sir, and I hope that um, this bill will see the light of the day very soon. And as the chairman said, we had, for us in the National Universities Commission, this happened not too long ago that we would have universities and then the law would follow. The 12 new universities were still battling with their laws, and um, I'm sure very soon we'll get over that. In fact, we have some universities, um, we all, I'm sure, uh, Pascal, as we have a law now, universities that are 20, oh, almost 20, 23 years old without laws, and that is a serious anomaly. So we uh, implore the Senate to uh, make sure that this university, uh, owing to its uh, peculiar nature, has it so passed as soon as possible. Very important, because if you don't have the law, a lot of things happen. And since you are going to have a lot of civilians within, you will very soon be having some court cases, you will be having some litigations. So it's very important that you have the law so that everyone knows where he or she stands when they come into the uh, university at Nigeria and University. So I wish to once more thank you most sincerely for this opportunity. And we are here, why we are still here, if any aspect of what we have submitted needs to be elaborated, I am sure uh, our legal luminary, Mr. Pascal Raga, will do that very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Vice Chancellor Nigeria University, distinguished and I am distinguished and just I am standing on the existing protocol. Uh, let me join Senator Alin Dume, Senator representing for North South, the Chief of Army Staff and Principal Staff Officers here present, members of Council of the Nigeria University of U, members of management, to make a few commitments. One, that we stand by everything, the distinguished senator, Alin Dume, the chief of army staff, the federal minister of education, and the NUC have said it. Two, as a university, we promise both the Nigerian army, the people of Nigeria, a very efficient, modern university that both the army, the armed forces, and the leaders of the government. This university shall be focused. We shall work closely with our regulatory agencies, particularly the NUC. We shall abide by the benchmark minimum academic standards. We shall use all the quality assurance tools. And while we work closely with all existing Nigerian universities, we pledge that in the not too distant future, which is the period of, let's say, five, six years, we shall not only compete, but we shall be among the top five universities in this country. <laughs> Order distinguished senators, issue of honor staff, the Vice Chancellor, Nigeria University Bureau, and the University Bureau. I am delighted to be here today because I was involved in the preparation of the academic brief for this university. <laughs> and the dream of the university made it a completely special way to put the Nigerian Army in line in the 21st century requirements of security worldwide. And to allow for continuous professional development of serving officers in the Nigerian Army, which are things that are not there at present. And that university will provide it. There are a lot of specialized courses that were Envisages for which NUC clearly does not have a minimum standard right now. But with the new uh, directions from the NUC, the Nigerian Army University will be able to start these courses 
and get professionals from all over the world to help develop curriculum that will be internationally acceptable. Another dream which I pray comes true pretty soon is the fact that this university is supposed to be creative and innovative in the sense of weaponry development and a lot of other things that the Nigerian army will need. You will agree with me that a nation cannot depend on other nations for its own security and expect that security to be tight. So, homegrown research, development, and creativity will take place in this university. And finally, one thing that gladdens my heart is that admission pro uh, specifications for the university are slightly modified to allow serving officers who wish to upgrade their skills to be able to come in through some remediation, and which some normal universities may not really permit. So with the mixture of serving officers and uh, civilians, I'm sure this will be a center of excellence not only for Nigeria, but for Africa as a whole. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Major General Hotels, Falcon Retired. Uh, I'm currently a student of Nazarene State University, but I was part and parcel of the plan for this university. I have a passion for this university. I share the chief of Afghanistan vision. I appreciate you know, the attachment the NUC has given to the development of this university. And we also want to thank the Federal Ministry of Education for the role the minister personally plays in obtaining the Federal Executive Council approval. But most importantly, I just want to draw attention to three main things. One is the vision of the university, which uh, the previous speaker has mentioned. I already thought to become a solution center in technology, research, and development for the promotion of self reliance, creativity, and innovation in addressing the challenges of the Nigerian army, the military, and the nation. I think this encapsulates everything that you want from that university. The second one is the multiplier effect on development. If you travel from Gombe to Gyu, the first time I traveled from Gombe to Gyu and we got to Koyakusa, the distance between Koyakusa and Gyu is 41 kilometers. It took us four and a half hours to do a distance of 41 kilometers. The first person that came to my mind is this, is this part of Nigeria. If it is part of Nigeria, I mean, what do we have to show people there that they are Nigerians? So, this university will have a multiplier effect on development. Not just in view, but on all the approaches, you know, to view itself. The third one is to mention that it is not just Nigeria that has a military university. In trying to plan and establish this university, we visited about seven countries and about 13 universities in Nigeria. One of the universities we visited is in China, the National Defense University of Technology. It's a seven-star university. Six million candidates compete for 6,000 places in that university per year. It is in charge of their space program. They are in charge of their all these seven G, five G. They are in charge of the research. Those are the things. And if you, if you follow the trend of development in the Nigerian Army in the last five, six years, you realize that they have been a, a marked improvement in quality, a marked improvement of cerebral activity. And I think that's what the Chief Money staff want to do to that environment. So I want to say, I thank all of you here. I want to assume that the bill has been passed. <laughs> And I want to wish the Chief of Army staff the very, very best about this university.
Thank you and God bless you. University. There is a need to consider having campuses in the other geopolitical zone. Uh, I, I think uh, my distinguished colleagues, uh, my distinguished colleague, have uh, you know beautifully presented the uh, the case of having that uh, campuses in various uh, geopolitical zone. And you can see she is the one and only member, uh, female member of our committee. You want to say something? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, just to support what the chairman has said, uh, this is a very specialized university and first of its kind in Nigeria. And crime has no color, crime has no religion. Crime is crime. Anywhere you can see crime, it is crime. Therefore, we suggested that we need to have campuses in every zone. And we have six geopolitical zones in this country. And we we're going to have campus in every geopolitical zone. Then we we'll have the epicenter in Boronu State, where this university is already cited. And it's a very noble idea because other committee members supported that. And by the time we we'll have this um, specialized school in every zone, that will help us to not just technolo uh, technological advancement, also help us to reduce the crime rate in that. And it will also unify this country based on the uh, Nigerian constitution that talks about unity and all of that. This will unify the country, it will bring development to the country, it will also spread the issue of, of um, com combating crime in Nigeria to all the zones of the country. Okay, so, so it's a noble idea. Concerning the admission issue. The admission. Oh, I have, I have said this several times. You can take the record of the university for the past two years. You have matriculated one. They are moving to part two now. This is their second year and we have uh, the recent admission. If you look at the admission, about 80% of the students so far admitted and registered are from the other geopolitical zones or states. So this is a unique uh, university, uh, even in the admission, because you know other universities in the country, especially the federal government universities, uh, set in the, what they call the catchment areas, specified catchment areas. This is not the case. There is no issue of state of origin. Once you are a Nigerian, and they meet the admission requirement to be admitted. I I have my colleagues here too, uh, Colin, and Chief, and others that will make a comment. But I can see the, the support all of us is very unanimous. Uh, there's no point all of us making the comments. Of, uh, Go ahead. The issue of uh, Nigeria Defense University. No, Nigerian Defense Academy. Oh, it's no, it's a university, but uh, civilians are not admitted in Nigerian Defense Academy and other institutions of army that are available, except for um, uh, Niger, uh, uh, Nigerian Defense, Nigerian War College. They do that admission, but not at the lower level. But this is the only university that you go in there, either as a civilian or as a soldier or any. Uh, any Nigerian that wants to further uh, his education in a specialized field can be admitted. So it's a unique one, not like... Uh, I think people are confusing with NDA. For NDA, you must be a, a soldier before you, uh, you go in there, then you graduate as Nigerian Army, Nigerian um, Air Force or Navy. Uh -huh. But uh, for uh, the Nigerian University, you don't have to be a soldier or you can go in and come out as a civilian. And soldiers that are in there can come in uh, and to further their studies, especially those ones that are uh, other ranks or those officers that even want to study specialized fields. So it's, it's, it's different. Thank you very much. Uh, who is